Hello, everybody. Chef Marcus Giuliano here, your chef on a mission. Welcome to Chef on a Mission Radio, episode number 67. We're going to talk about corn tortillas, specifically for tacos. America is in a love affair with tacos. Uh, Taco Tuesday happens all over the country, and tacos are becoming more and more popular on everybody's menu. But let's talk about what's really in the actual corn tortillas today. If you're like me, you read ingredient labels and you are concerned about what you're putting into your mouth, putting into your body. So we'll talk about that. But first off, this is brought to you by Aroma Time Bistro, which is my restaurant since 2003. Jamie and I opened that in 2003 in a small village in upstate New York, 90 miles north of New York City in Ellenville. And we have been certified green almost since day one. A couple of years in, we got certified green. We are farm to table with a very eclectic menu. We like to say um, small footprint global flavors. So we're in Ellenville, we're 90 miles north, Aroma Time, T-H-Y-M-E Bistro. AromatimeBistro.com, um, Aromatime Bistro on Instagram, on Facebook. Follow us there. This is also brought to you by VIP Winery Vacations. VIP Winery Vacations is my company where I take you to the best wineries. It's basically to my friends' wineries in Italy, Spain, uh, and now uh, all through New York. And now Valle de Guadalupe in Baja, California, in Mexico. Join us in Mexico. I am totally in love with that region of Mexico, the food, the wine, the hospitality, the people there are amazing. It is the Napa Valley of uh, Mexico and uh, join us there. Best Mexican wine and tours.com and check it out. VIP winery vacations.com for all of our tours, best Mexican wine tours. And if you need help here in the Hudson Valley, we provide a designated driver service, your car, our driver fully insured under us, and of course, licensed. So check that out. VIP winery vacations.com. We can help you travel through wine world. We can help you make lifelong memories uh, in the wine, in wine countries. All right. So now on to, the love affair America has with tacos. Mexican food, first of all, is uh, very, it's one of the most popular cuisines here in America. It's right behind uh, Chinese and Italian food. And, uh, but big part of Mexico besides the food is the margaritas, right? The margaritas are a really big culture thing that tequila, uh, they don't have as many selections of booze like we have here in the States or in other places, they basically make tequila, mezcal, bacanora, and Sotol are the four spirits that come out of there, all made from the agave plant. Uh, there's a few other things they make here and there, but those are the main four that you will find, tequila being the number one, mezcal being number two, and then Sotol, and then uh, very little bacanora as well. Uh, but Mexico is known for their corn. They're known for their corn. as their uh, Oaxaca is supposed to be the birthplace of corn. And corn has grown all across America. It's been hybridized over the years to look like something that's not even the original version of heirloom corn. And this happens with a lot of foods throughout the world, especially like wheat. The original einkorn wheat was totally different than it was than wheat is today. In fact, in Julius Caesar's day, they would take the wheat and they would um, take it and put it in their mouth as a source of of energy source of fuel, the raw wheat berries, raw wheat berries, unground wheat berries. And of course they were soft, less gluten in them. And of course, always back then, always grown organic, right? So that was a very, very high source of energy for Julius Caesar's army for his forces. So when it comes to corn, um, Mexico being the birthplace of corn, the United States growing vast quantities of corn all over the country. Uh, and of course, um, corn is one of those things that's not quite the most nutritious product because uh, it's been hybridized so much. It's very high in sugar. People try to stay away from it. But when you go to a Mexican restaurant and you're having tacos, corn is a very integral part of the cuisine, especially when you're getting uh, taco shells. Hard taco shells are made of corn and soft taco shells as well. So if you're getting an enchilada, uh, you're getting corn in there. A lot of people like Mexican food because you can avoid some of the gluten and the flours like that are coming in the tortillas and switch over to corn and have enchiladas and corn chips and not have to worry about bread. So Mexican restaurants become popular for people that are uh, avoiding wheat, gluten, gluten intolerant, celiac, or, um, whatever their uh, wheat preference is or whatever they're having issues with wheat. Mexican restaurants become an easy feat for them to eat in. If you want to eat healthy, of course, Mexican restaurants are loaded with beans and avocados and rice, and you don't have to partake in the fried chips or the fried chimichanga. Uh, you could actually create something that is much more um, lighter 
uh, healthier. Of course, avocados, fresh salsas, things like that. So you can actually create a nice dish. A lot of people that I know that are that are health nuts say, yeah, I can usually go to a Mexican restaurant and find something, modify something that I can eat and know that I've eaten better than going to eat French fries somewhere and a burger on a white bun and, and all that kind of stuff. So American restaurants, uh, Mexican restaurants are popular for many reasons. So let's talk about corn tortillas. I prefer corn tortillas because I um, like to avoid wheat. Do I avoid wheat all the time? I don't, but when I ever have an opportunity to avoid wheat, I take that, I seize the opportunity and I go for my veggie enchiladas and things like that. So, but people do make tacos at home and they're going to the store to buy the big brands of corn tortillas, whether they're hard shell or soft. And you bring these home and you make your own tacos and tacos are so easy to make, right? And there really is like no like specific like exact recipe for tacos. It's what you like to put in them. Do you want to put shrimp in them? Do you want to put pulled pork in them? Do you want to put grilled mahi mahi? Do you want to put all mushrooms in it? Do you want like a mushroom taco? Do you want to put cheese? Do you not want to put cheese? Do you want to put salsa? Do you want to put green salsa? Do you want to put a spicy salsa? Do you want to put shredded lettuce in it? Do you want to put avocado or do you want to put guacamole? So uh, uh, tacos are very, very flexible. Uh, your definition, your likings make what the taco that you like. And a lot of people go to restaurants and order, you know, one fish taco, one beef taco, one pork taco, one mushroom taco, and so on. And sort of have a, a um, variety of tacos. And they're so easy to eat, right? Because you just pick them up and you eat them, which makes them perfect food on the run, especially, um, you know, if you go to a taco cart and you're on, on the street somewhere and you need just something and they're wrapped up there and they're great burritos, tacos, all that kind of stuff. Makes great, simple, easy food to move with. And whether it's a, a, a restaurant that is, that is like um, uh, quick service, where it's very casual or very more, more of a fine dining restaurant, um, you can really elevate a taco into something really special. So the, the price range can vastly vary on tacos because of that. And tacos can be adapted, like I said, any menu from quick service, uh, informal, casual to, uh, to sit down fancy restaurants can all serve tacos. Now, taco shells. So if you were to walk into the store right now and pick up some taco shells, you would pick up some big brands. And if you are like me and flip the ingredients over, you will, um, if you know what you're reading or know what you're looking for, you will be shocked and say, how can I bring this home to my family? How can I bring this home for myself? When you're in a restaurant, you don't have that option of asking the chef or the restaurant owner to, hey, go back and grab the taco shell package from me. Can I see what's in it? You have to trust what they're saying. And I can guarantee you most restaurants whether it's American restaurants, true Mexican restaurants, unless they're making them themselves. If you're in Mexico and you're a small restaurant, they're making corn tortillas themselves. That's going to be a different story. I'm talking about tortillas that are mass produced, which are most tortillas you're going to buy in the store, uh, especially if they're sitting on the shelf. That's your first giveaway. If you're going to buy even whole wheat, uh, even wheat tortillas, corn tortillas or flour tortillas, and they're sitting on the shelf um, outside of refrigeration, outside of the freezer, first thing that's going to pop in your mind is, Okay, those are a very fresh product that have to be eaten very soon. So they're going to get moldy or they're loaded with mold inhibitors, preservatives, chemicals to stabilize them and make them last a lot longer. And that's the latter is usually the true part. So here's, you know, a simple one from a big brand here. Um, enriched. This is, um, let's see. Okay, so this has corn, uh, corn, corn flour, um, water, vegetable, vegetable shortening, uh, soybean oil, hydrogenated soybean oil, palm oil, uh, a little bit of baking soda, um, aluminum sulfate, cornstarch, uh, phosphate, calcium sulfate, salt preservatives, calcium propionate, sorbic acid, uh, molasses, um, uh, sodium meta bisulfate. Uh, so this one is loaded with a lot of stuff here. Really, really crazy. Um, here's another brand that I picked up a little bit easier. Ground corn treated with treated with lime. So I guess lime juice, lime flavor. Uh, cellulose gum, propionic acid to preserve freshness. Benzoic acid to preserve freshness. Phosphoric acid preservative. Gargum and, and uh, amylase uh, are in this one. A bit of a cleaner product uh, but still there's ingredients and they're like why isn't just corn and water in there like what's what's making this what's making this big brand here have to put 
freshness preservatives in here, uh, a preservative, two things to preserve freshnesses. Like why when if they were made at home, we wouldn't have to do that. So you can now, if you want to avoid this altogether, which is what, we, of course, we recommend, which I recommend, you want to go to, and you don't even need to go to a health food store because more and more stores are becoming very up on, up on health foods. Even mainstream grocery stores, you can walk into and see the health food aisle. You can go into the freezer section and you can see lots more vegetarian, vegan foods. You can see Amy's, uh, which has great pre prepared meals, which is now like in every grocery store across America. Amy's is not only limited to whole foods. So you don't have to go to whole foods. You can walk into a regular grocery store, but you have to know where to look in these grocery stores. We currently have a shop right in a Walmart near us. Shop right here has more selections than the Walmart, but there's a whole row there. And in the back in the freezer section, there's a whole row of stuff in the back freezer section of things that you can walk in and actually look for that are healthy, organic, non-preservative. And when you buy your corn tortillas, you will want to buy, my favorite brand is Food for Life. Food for Life makes these sprouted grain. They make sprouted grains. They're the ones who make the Ezekiel bread. They also make sprouted corn tortillas. So in their corn tortilla, um, and there's other corn tortillas out there that are going to be like this, other brands. It's just a brand that I know. So that's the brand that I'm going to, um, to quote here. So let's see if I can find... Um, what are in here because I just had it before in front of me. So um, let me read the difference about sprouted grains first. That's the page I'm on here. So when you sprout a grain, so when you, as we know Ezekiel, a lot of people know Ezekiel because they make sprouted bread, sprouted buns, sprouted, sprouted uh, tortillas, sprouted, they just make sprouted tortillas, they make sprouted bread, they make a bunch of sprouted grain products. So they call it the sprouted grain difference. So here's the benefits of sprouting grain. If you're sprouting grain, sprouting wheat, especially wheat, sprouting the wheat lowers the gluten. So a lot of people who said, well, I can't handle gluten. They might be able to handle something that's made from sprouted wheat because sprouted wheat, once you sprout it, it releases the gluten, lowers the gluten, release some, some nutritionists say it releases it all together. People that consume wheat grass, wheat grass is totally gluten-free. Wheat grass comes from the wheat berry. It's sprouted. Um, and then they make juice out of the grass. There's no gluten in that. And people who have celiac are, I've always seen everybody totally fine doing wheatgrass juice who have celiac disease. They have no problem with it. So sprouting it creates um, increased digestibility. Sprouting breaks down starches in the grains so simply into simple sugars. So your body can, can digest them easily. Um, I know when I go to a Mexican restaurant, a lot of times I have um, digestion issues. I have serious digestion issues. I have to eat it early in the day. I can't, can't go out, out at night at eight o'clock and go to a Mexican restaurant and eat because um, I have digestion issues. I have tacos at my own restaurant made from this type of, of, of tortillas, uh, corn tortillas, and I don't have any digestion issues. In fact, last night I had a taco late at 8, 8, 830. I had two tacos and not one single digestion issue going to bed. I felt great. And... Um, and this really makes a difference on increased digestibility. Increased absorption of minerals. Sprouting, sprouting breaks down enzyme inhibitors. So your body can more easily absorb calcium, magnesium, iron, copper, and zinc. Increased antioxidants. Sprouting releases more antioxidants that are naturally stored, that are naturally stored in the grains and seeds themselves. Uh, increased vitamin C. Sprouting produces uh, vitamin C. The sprouting process produces vitamin C. And the sprouting process also increases the vitamin B2, B6, and B5. So when you think about it, that grain, whatever it is, whether it's corn, whether it's wheat, um, barley, all these grains have all this energy they need for life. And you're starting the life process of these. And when I say sprout, you're just sprouting them for a day or so where they just start getting a tail on them. And that's enough to release all these benefits. Uh, it's just like soaking um, nuts. And so like I recommend if you want to eat nuts and not have any digestion issues, you soak them and dehydrate them. And that sprouting process of making them start to germinate and then drying them. So they're, so they're back to that state of where you would have first saw like an almond or, or a walnut really, really helps digestion, really helps digestion. So now what is that exactly in, let's just say this, these uh, food, the food for life, um, uh, product here. So let me just go to their website. Tortillas. I had this window open before and I don't know what happened to it. So sprouted corn tortillas. I've gotten lots of people hooked on these, by the way. A lot of people have been really hooked on these. Okay. So here we go. Ingredients. 
sprouted, organic sprouted corn, water, sea salt, and lime. One, two, three, four ingredients. Four ingredients, that's it. Sprouted corn, filtered water, sea salt, and lime. Four ingredients in the food for life. I went over all the ingredients in the other ones, loaded with tons of stuff, loaded. Um, these are so simple. Do, do, of course, this, do these cost more? Well, of course they cost more, but um, do you want your health? Do you want you know easy digestion? Do you want higher quality food? Um, do you want better quality of life by eating better quality foods? Of course you do. Um, we all know the quality of gas you put into your car makes a difference. Um, we all know, you know, it's just, this is common knowledge, but when it's time to come to go into and look for this, because it's so used to walking into a store and walking, like when we walk in here to shop, right, everything's laid right out in front of you, all the fruits and vegetables, then you hit the bread section, all the tortillas are like, literally like right on out there on the counter, ready to go in front of the deli. Um, everything's ready to go and you pick it up to find these. You have to go back to the back of the store. You have to look into the freezer. You have to do some research or some digging work sometimes and see, do they have exactly what I need? And most people are trained just to walk into the store and pick up what they've been picking up for years. Those aisles that they've been, they've, they've been going for years. They're not really used to, Hey, there's a section here that has healthier foods. There's a freezer section that has healthier foods. There's other areas in this place that I can shop that have better alternatives. And if you want to go to a health food store, fantastic. If you want to go to Whole Foods, fantastic. Um, if you want to go to support, of course, an independent health food store, that would be amazing. And then you can walk in there and actually talk to somebody who's knowledgeable and hopefully they won't have anything that has those the first couple of uh, labels of ingredients that I read. They, of course, they might, and you have to read, especially if you go to Whole Foods. Whole Foods is not quite the most... Um, I want to say people trust things that are in Whole Foods and they're not as trustworthy worthy as you would think. A lot of those companies that they're selling in there are owned by big, big companies. They're owned by Cargill, they're owned by General Mills, they're owned by PepsiCo. And there's just sort of off brands or organic brands or supposedly healthier brands that are still loaded with stuff. So you really need to read whatever store you're going into. The health food store, of course, who have, will typically have more qualified people to help guide you through. If you walk into ShopRite, and if the, some, 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 some ShopRites have nutritionists in them. Ours used to, ours doesn't here. But I doubt if you like went into a nutritionist and you want something sprouted or come show me the difference between the tortillas and which one's healthier. Some of these nutritionists really don't have a clue either. Uh, in the health food store, they're going to have much, much of a better idea. So, of course, that's only the corn, folks. Uh, that's only the tor tortilla part of the of the the taco. All the ingredients matter that go in, uh, of course. And um, so, so, try to source local beef, local whatever, uh, sustainably raised shrimp, sustainably ca uh, caught shrimp, uh, sustainable fish like mahi, whatever you're making. Everything makes a difference of what you're putting in there. Remember, you are what you eat. So, um, and we'll, we've talked about this many times. We can talk about it again in future shows. But I think this was just for the corn tortilla itself. And um, folks, thank you for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to follow me on um, Aroma Time Bistro, T-H-Y-M-E Bistro, and my travel business, VIP Winery Vacations. And of course, on Instagram, if you want to follow me personally, it's one, the numeral one, chef on a mission, one chef on a mission on, on Instagram. And of course I'm on Facebook as well. And I'm on Twitter. I'm just not as active on Twitter as I used to be, but I am on there. You can find me there or hook up with me on LinkedIn or whatever social media platform you're on. And that is it folks for today. Short lesson on corn tortillas. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and until next time, um, eat healthy, eat well, and um, 